welcome everyone to our project Data Limited Learning of Complex Dynamical Systems, DLL. So my name is David Broman and I'm the main PI of this project. And together with me here, I got uh, my co-PI. So Saikat Chatelier, uh, Veronique Chouteau, Hogan Yalmason, and Alexandre Coutier. Machine learning has been very successful in today's society, and especially in areas such as visual object recognition or speech recognition. These are forms of supervised learning, and another area is what's called reinforcement learning, where you have an environment and an agent, and then the agent is performing different actions on the environment. In this way, you can observe and sample from the environment and get rewards so that you can actually improve the, the agent's performance and to perform a certain task. It has been uh, successful in, in more kind of toy examples where you play board games or video games. But the problem is that you, you really need to have a really large amount of data and that you can simulate the environment and you know, that you have a known environment that you can collect this data from. So what is the research objective of this product? Let me read it out loud. It is to develop new techniques, methods, and tools to learn to control complex dynamical systems using a limited number of data samples and structural information in a reliable manner. So what does that mean, actually? Well, we're working on complex dynamical systems, the systems that evolve over time, uh, where you cannot sample the system too often. You can just do it limited number of times because it might be too expensive to do it, or it can actually be that the system can get destroyed if you try to do it too many times. And this work is really a interdisciplinary work uh, in technology. So this is something that we cannot do as PIs alone. We need to collaborate. So we have people working in computer science, especially on modeling and languages and compilers on automatic control, uh, control of uh, and system identification, and in machine learning, and, and particularly then on reinforcement learning. And, and this is, is really a project where we interact with other projects uh, funded by other agencies to be able to do this. We are also interdisciplinary when it comes to application areas. We are, we're working on uh, robotics and, and also on, on biotechnology and uh, bioprocessing. This is really a fundamental research project uh, focusing on um, basic research. But we're also, of course, interested in, you know, what, what can we get as a long-term societal impact? And, and to be able to be more concrete, we are focusing on, on two application demonstrators. So the first one is, is about continuous bioprocessing, where you have a complex system, in this case, a, a biological system that you want to control, but you cannot sample it very often, but you want to control it so that you can harvest the system more continuously. And, and this is very useful to get you know, more flexibility and efficiency in, in the production and, and can in long term uh, lead to safer and more cost efficient uh, medicine. The other application uh, area is, is reinforcement learning of cyber physical systems. So what, what is a cyber physical system? Well, that is a system where you can combine physical part, mechanical part, for example, with computers typically embedded into networks and, and, and control them. And what we are really focusing on here is, is robots and, and robotics uh, and humanoid robots. So what we are aiming for here is to be able to get a robot to learn how to first sit up and then stand up and then to walk by itself. So this is really a physical balancing problem. And, and using then reinforcement learning. But the problem here is that you cannot, you cannot try this robot many times. You cannot you know, sample data and let it fall 100,000 times. So it's, there's only a limited amount of data that you can probe and test on this system. What is then the approach that we take in this product? Well, we have this complex system, uh, as we talked about before, that we want to control using some sort of reinforcement learning technique. Uh, but we cannot probe the system. We can just probe it a limited amount of times. So the key idea is to create a model 
a so-called gray box model where we can learn from data, but we also encode a priori information into the model. And so this model can also be called a digital twin. So a replica of the real system, a model of the system. And if we have that model of the system and we are able to simulate the model to study it as if it was working for real, the key idea is that we then can use the simulated information to be able to train the actual agent and the reinforcement learning problem. So this is all good. And if you actually is able to do that, you can then use this trained model on the real system and test the real system. The thing is, of course, that the model is not reality. So it will not be exactly as the real system, but then we get data and then we use this data to improve the model so that you get a better model that you then lay again, again can train uh, on the real system. So we have different techniques here involved. So one is, is for example, active learning, or, or it's also called optimal experimental design, where we would like to try to probe the system in the smartest way so we get and learn as much information as possible so that we can improve the model. Another thing is about the actual model and how to simulate it. So we're working on so-called equation-based uh, approaches where we encode the, the model using differential equations. So that, and then one of the challenges there is to make it expressive and then also to be able to make the simulations extremely efficient, especially targeting uh, heterogeneous hardware. And finally, the reinforcement learning problem itself is that you can utilize uh, deep learning techniques here, but also what we're studying is more model-based techniques where we take this model, the gray box model into account to be able to be as efficient as possible when we're learning the system. So an important aspect of our project is really the team where we have many key competences from different fields. So for example, we have Veronique and her team working on biotechnology, Håkan and his team work on, on special on system identification and control. We have Psychot working on deep learning. We have Alexander focusing on reinforcement learning and myself focusing on modeling languages and especially on simulation of, of equation-based systems. And to be able to, to do this, we divide our main projects into three sub-projects where different uh, PIs uh, collaborate. So the first sub-project is about continuous uh, bioprocessing where Veronique, Håkan and Saiket are involved. And the second project is about uh, reinforcement learning on cyber physical systems where Håkan, Saiket, Alexander and myself are involved. So th these two sub-projects, uh, continuous bioprocessing and, and reinforcement learning of CPS, uh, these are application domains application areas. So we have a third product here where we really develop the theory around this that are then put in practice in the two different application areas. And now my colleagues are going to present each of these sub projects one by one. So project one, which is about continuous bioprocessing and gathering three of the PIs. Continuous bioprocessing for the production of therapeutic antibodies. Antibodies are large molecules which are used for the treatment of cancer or diseases like rheumatism. These are produced in bioreactors by mammalian cells. At KTH, we are working on continuous production of these type of molecules. This is supported by mathematical modeling. However, the modeling have some uncertainty. In the continuous bioprocessing subproject, we'd like to include information from gene expression. In this project, there are some challenges. The overall system is highly nonlinear. And also we have very limited data availability. The overall mathematical system can be shown as follows. In this project, we'd like to use model-driven 
deep learning systems and system identification to capture the information from inputs and to get relevant outputs. So in this sub-project, three groups are working together. Verenix group brings the expertise in bioprocessing. They provide the data and also the basic model. Our group develops model-based deep system for further improvement of the model. And this helps for information ex extraction. And Hawkins group takes the output from us and develop system identification tools and model reduction. Our second sub-project is uh, reinforcement learning in cyber physical systems. Uh, my name is Håkan Jalmarsson. I'm uh, one of the four co-PIs in this project. So in this project, we want to control real-world cyber physical systems. And the challenges here are that uh, these systems are often very complex and the experimentation that we can do on them is very limited, as David already have told you. Uh, but the leverage we have is that physics, well, it's actually quite simple. It's just a few equations and some constraints. Uh, and we also have very uh, agile uh, architectures today that we can use for, for control. Still there are, of course, challenges. We have nonlinear dynamics. We need to have efficient computations because that's what our ID builds on. Especially we need to combine CPU and GPUs in an efficient way. We also need to have a system uh, or a procedure that works uh, for any system basically. And so we shouldn't have to redo the project for a new system. Uh, also the model estimation itself can be very challenging, especially when you have unmeasured disturbances. So the principle of the project is as follows. Uh, by using physical models, we can minimize the amount of experiments needed. On the other hand, this generates a lot of equations. So we, in order to do simulation, we need to do them efficiently. Also, these models contain unknown parameters like the mass of a robot uh, that need to be determined from experimental data. So for that, we need parameter estimation. And here we can use system identification or machine learning techniques. Uh, and it's very interesting to study the, the synergies between these two areas. Uh, another interesting topic in the project is how to do experiments efficiently here, because we cannot do, we have, we have only limited resources here. Another concept used in the project is that we, we, we use simulation also for the parameter estimation, extensive simulations. In the end, we get an updated model that we can use to do simulations on. And that brings us to the controller design. And here we will use reinforcement learning. And uh, instead of doing that on a real system, which requires a lot of experiments, we will use our model as a substitute so that means that we will do extensive simulations for designing the controller. And also for that reason, we need to do efficient physical simulations. So this is the overall picture of the project. So I will now end with just giving you a brief snapshot of our activities here. So here you see the equations for a pendulum that we would like to model. And the measurement equation looks like this. So you see that this very simple system leads directly to quite a complex uh, model. And in fact, there's no method available that can reliably estimate the model parameters of this uh, simple model. Uh, so you see in the graph below, uh, the dashed line being the value of one of the parameters in the model. And the crosses that you see represent model estimates. And when you move to the right in the graph, the, it corres that corresponds to more data having been used. And you see that we don't get a better estimate. In the project, we have a new method where we achieve just that, namely that uh, with more data, we get a more accurate estimate. And this will be presented uh, in a conference this fall. So the last sub-project of DLL involves most of the PI and aims at laying the foundation towards the development 
of reinforcement learning techniques with limited data. So the generic envision system is consists of three components. The first component is the complex system we wish to control itself. The second component is uh, a simulator of a, or model of this complex system. And the third component is the controller or the learning agent. Um, the first fundamental question we wish to answer within the theory project is to um, characterize the number of sample or observation from the complex system, we need to calibrate the model or the simulator with a prescribed level of accuracy. And we managed to do that for linear system and other kinds of uh, toy example. The second question uh, is concerned with reinforcement learning per se. And here we try to understand uh, how to devise, um, how to learn optimal control policy, assuming that our model or simulator is actually accurate. The, search, the third research theme within this uh, project uh, concerns the, the system globally and aims at identifying opt uh, optimal control policy while minimizing the number of sample of observation taken from the, the complex system, so with data limited. So I would like to finally mention a promising research direction uh, investigated in this uh, project, and it concerns the design of the, the simulator, the model. And we try to advocate a, a model with uh, an architecture with two layers. One layer where we actually take as input the high dimensional state of the complex system and output a latent state with much, much reduced uh, dimensionality. And this uh, latent state is what matters as an input of the control policy, which actually uh, makes it much easier to learn an optimal control policy. And here again, we can ask uh, several questions, including how many samples do we need to learn the uh, embedding towards the latent state? How many samples do we need to come up with an overall optimal policy? So in summary, the whole DLL project is really about machine learning, but where you only have limited amount of data, meaning that you can only probe and sample the system a limited amount of times. And this involves things like active learning, equation-based modeling and simulation and reinforcement learning. We have divided uh, this project into three sub-projects. So one is on continuous bioprocessing. The other one is on reinforcement learning of cyber physical systems. And to bind it all together, we have the theory part. Thank you for listening. <laughs>